So we've talked about what a mean is and a standard deviation is and how to calculate a mean, but really in the end, I expect you to be using your calculator to do all your calculations for means and standard deviations. You need to figure out how your calculator works, and if you haven't already looked through the videos, then as soon as you watch this, you wanna watch the video specific to your calculator or just go Google it or hit YouTube videos and you'll find how to use it. Some of you have to put your calculator into statistics mode before you can start working on it. Others, it already is in a statistical mode. But every time we go to do a new problem, you're going to need to enter the data for whatever problem we're working on. And from there, you should then just be able to retrieve whatever numbers we're looking for, be it mean, standard deviation, et cetera. But the key here is that those crazy formulas that we saw in section 3.1 and 3.2, you will never be manually doing those. The other piece I wanna be sure you recognize is the symbols that you're going to see on your calculator. So in terms of your calculator, pretty much every calculator I've ever seen will have the N symbol. A lot of times you'll see this right after you enter your data. And the nice thing is, remember that tells you the count. It tells you how many items you've entered. Sometimes I'll be entering numbers and I'll push the last button, but you know if I didn't hit enter, it doesn't store with my data. So then when I look at N and I see that N is only six, but I know I had seven numbers, then I can go back and add that seventh number. Now when it comes to an average, a mean, if you remember, we have two symbols, X bar and mu. But if you also remember, they're the exact same formula. So a lot of calculators won't have a separate button for both of those. You'll just see a mu button, or most calculators actually just show you X bar, and you just need to remember, oh yeah, I can use that for my population mean. The other one that we wanna watch out for is whether we're taking a sample standard deviation or a population standard deviation. Now, in general, S is for a sample and sigma is for a population, but there are a few variations. Sometimes I've seen a subscript be used and it can be X and anything else, it doesn't really matter. But the one that sometimes can throw people off is that when we're talking about a sample, the symbol sigma is used, but the key is because it's N minus one, as a subscript, and if you went back to your section 3.2 notes, you'd see that a sample standard deviation is calculated by dividing by n minus one, and a population is dividing by n. So that subscript is letting you know that it's standard deviation, but of which type. And hopefully you'll just get used to your calculators. The only other thing to watch out for is most calculators do not provide variation, because if you remember, it's the number before the square root, or just the standard deviation squared. So what we'll do is we'll just take our standard deviation and square that if we ever need to calculate variation.